What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more Aha. Uh -huh. And as you can see from the title, I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, I heard from a couple people that they're enjoying the Summer Solstice uh, reactions, but ultimately, because those tracks are quite different in several cases from the studio versions, it's a bit of a different journey. So to only do that one for several Aha uh -huh reactions in a row, it might be a bit overkill for some. Again, I know with everything, it seems like post 2000 there's some mixed opinions especially you know the more recent albums i know true north was an album where i found out the aha family despite um all enjoying aha's music have very different feelings not only from uh, or for the album overall but from song to song uh, and again i really enjoy that i enjoy hearing the different impressions even when they are more critical certainly when they're more positive but ultimately it's just part of the tapestry that i now understand this dedicated fan base has toward the music of this amazing band so um, i continue to learn through your comments even those again that are more critical in some cases so um, but yeah, sensitive to the idea that maybe just going through Summer Solstice all the way through both discs until the end would maybe be not the greatest for some people in the AHA family. I'm going to change things up. I'm going to keep going back to Summer Solstice. I'm going to continue going through this, which is ending on a high note, um, once more recorded late 2010, released as a, you know, a CD or an album in 2011. Uh, but also I'm going to go back and do some of the live in South America DVD audio. Um, I think as I keep saying, there's like one or two tracks left on how can I sleep with your voice in my head. So I'm going to start jumping around a little bit. I am going to maybe do two or three track um, bunches. So maybe I'll do two or three from ending on a high note and then maybe I'll jump back to the South America DVD audio and do a couple of those. Um, maybe then go back to Summer Solstice. I'll try to keep it fresh so that, you know, even if some people prefer one of these sub journeys more than others, you know, they don't have to wait too long before we come back to something um, that they're more fond of. So trying to look out for the whole AHA family, hopefully you can understand. And again, shout out to those that offered a comment in that regard. Um, I do appreciate you. Um, so yeah, we're going to listen to the ending on a high note performance of Hunting High and Low, the title track of their uh, debut studio album, 1985. Uh, and yeah, I really enjoy the tune. In one way, it reminds me of what I now understand their early styles and sounds um, to be characterized by. But in another way, it has a very folksy sound to it. And it's, you know, that type of feel is something they would develop, I would say, more significantly and in a few different uh, directions in later releases and over time. So in a way it feels very much um, a part of their early sound and their first album and yet in another way I can hear hints of things that I would then hear I think in more full and elaborated um, character in later songs and albums. Um, again maybe starting especially in the 90s and going beyond that but uh, ultimately as Luca gets a re-stretch and a re-fall asleep um, yeah, I'm really excited to hear this. Again, now we're back in the realm of them performing the songs in, you know, a full electric uh, performance. And I am also thinking that um, given that this at the time was, this is it, this is the final concert, um, you know, ending on a high note, it makes me think we're back into a realm where most of the songs are going to be performed relatively close to their classic or original studio album sounds. So, um, you know, taking my mind out of the context of the Summer Solstice release where it's again reconfigured, which I really enjoyed them talking about that at the end of the last reaction I did for that. Um, that was really cool to hear them, you know, again being quite funny, but also getting a sense for, okay, so you're going to do an acoustic performance, you know, you got to figure out how you're going to arrange things. You're going to, you got to figure out what you're going to replace when there's certain things that you then can't do. So. Um, I enjoyed hearing that, but as I said, I think we're back to a more um, straightaway performance of these tunes, so let's get it. This is Aha, Hunting High and Low, uh, heard as part of the concert <clears throat> in December 2010, released as the CD or album ending on a high note in 2011. Crowd. 
It's funny though, so you know, the first couple of minutes I'm actually thinking, man, like, you know, I haven't listened to it in the last week or so, but I'm, you know, hunting high and low. This feels like it is a more altered performance. It feels more acoustic, more a bit lower key, uh, and then by the end they kicked it up into a higher gear and it got closer, even if still more of a band sound um, than the original studio track. It definitely got more to the sonic place of the original in that latter like third of the track uh, but I enjoy the way they arrange that and I like I am now wondering um, and trying to remember again so many different deep dives even just for Aha going through these different albums and I'm trying to remember if um, it is there you know some of these performances of the songs are more altered compared to the studio version because as I was coming back to this album I was thinking that you know given this is the last concert or at least that was the plan um, that they would be closer to what everyone, you know, remembers and thinks of as the, like, normal version of these songs. But again, um, at least in the first half or, like, two-thirds, that felt 
a bit altered, a bit more acoustic, a bit more like um, you know down tempo jazzy than the original. Um, but yeah, either way, as I said, I, I feel like there's elements even in this live performance where it's it's early aha, uh -huh, but there's bits in that a feel that they would develop I think more fully and more um, diversely in later releases. So um, I enjoy the the nature of that song in terms of their historical catalog and their sonic legacy, uh, which again, I like having re uh, returned to this album, it was like the song started and hearing the crowd and like suddenly, you know, thinking, okay, at this moment, this was going to be it for, uh-huh, what are you doing? <laughs> she apparently wants to be fed. We shall do that in one moment. Uh, but I was, no, she just wants to sit on my feet. Okay. Um, but I was thinking that um, the emotion and the, like, the significance of this performance, at least for someone who, you know, is going through their catalog and understanding their significance in a much more condensed and recent timeline, but I was immediately put back into that emotional state and I began thinking about what people were saying and like how significant this was and people were emotional who were lucky enough to go and even those who weren't lucky enough to go, you know, the gravity of what this represented. I instantly started thinking of all those things when the track started, even though like as I went to return to the album and start the reaction, that wasn't really on the front of my mind. So um, yeah, like just hearing this concert again, it's like, boom, I'm remembering what it's meant to people and you know, what I can already feel palpably despite it being, again, a more recent understanding on my part. So in any case, uh, I enjoyed the performance. It was a bit more different from the studio version than I expected, um, but yeah, a really cool song regardless. Let me know what you think. I will see you next time. Peace.